The New York Times published an explosive article about President Obama's, quote, kill list, a, quote, top secret nominations project process that designates terrorists for kill or capture, of which the capture part has become largely theoretical, end quote. The piece details the president's role in regular Tuesday counterterrorism meetings in the White House Situation Room, where he pours over suspected terrorist bios and decide whose death to order next. And there's this. Quote, Mr. Obama embraced a disputed method for counting civilian casualties that did little to box him in. It, in effect, counts all military age males in a strike zone as combatants, according to several administration officials, unless there is explicit intelligence posthumously proving them innocent. It would be and is a severe violation of human rights law as well as the laws of war for the administration to kill people that it might otherwise be able to detain. We have had a program that was begun under the Bush administration, but vastly expanded and accelerated by the Obama administration. And this is a program in which the executive branch, the president, claims the authority to unilaterally declare people enemies of the state, including U.S. citizens, and order their killing based on secret legal criteria, secret process, and secret evidence. There is no national security policy that poses a great greater, uh, graver threat to human rights law and civil liberties than this policy today. President Obama authorized his first known drone strike three days after taking office as he was announcing this radical shift from the, the, the Bush era doctrine of, of preventive and preemptive war. <laughs> President Obama is running an assassination program where in a two week span in Yemen, he killed three U.S. citizens, none of whom have been in, indicted or charged with any crime. And, and, and Abdul Rahman al a 16 year old U.S. citizen whose only crime appears to have been that his last name was al was murdered in a U.S. strike that, and there has been no explanation as to why a 16-year-old U.S. citizen was killed. There, there, were, there is no indication that any suspected militants were killed. There's no indication that any known al-Qaeda figures were killed. That family uh, deserves an explanation. The American people deserve an explanation. The most dangerous thing I think the yeah. U.S. is doing, besides murdering innocent people in, in many cases, is giving people in Yemen or Somalia or Pakistan a non-ideological reason to hate the United States, to want to fight the United States. Non-ideological reasons, meaning personal vendetta, is much more powerful than we hate your McDonald's, we hate your freedom, we hate your Christianity. It's, uh, that, that's, that's real to them. In fact, I can say that the types of operations that the U.S. has been involved in, in, in the counterterrorism realm, that nearly for the past year there hasn't been a single collateral death because of the exceptional proficiency, precision of the capabilities that we've been able to develop. That's one of the chief counterterrorism advisors to President Obama, John Brennan. Uh, he, here's PBS at a frontline documentary on al-Qaeda in Yemen. Again, J Jeremy, you just got back from there, been doing reporter, uh, reporting on it. Um, and here's a, rep a reporter pointing to where um, the American citizen son of Anwar al-Awlaki, a 16-year-old uh, boy who was from Denver, uh, w was killed. Take a look. These are the spots where the son of the American preacher, Anwar al-Awlaki, was killed. His son and eight of his friends were sitting in this place having dinner, and they were targeted by one rocket here, another rocket there, if you see this big circle, targeted them, and then another rocket beyond this area. They say it's an American-targeted killing for an American citizen, of course. Jeremy, you used the word murder before when you talked about um, the, the people who have been killed by these strikes who are not combatants, we can establish. Um, and obviously that's a, that's a loaded word because it carries certain moral and, and, and legal ramifications. Why, why do you use that word? If, if someone goes into a shopping mall in pursuit of one of their enemies and opens fire on, on a crowd of people and guns down a bunch of innocent people in a shopping mall, they've murdered those people. Um, if, when, when the Obama administration sets a policy where patterns of life are enough of a green light to drop missiles on people or to use, uh, you know, to, to, to send in AC-130s to spray them down. Um, but that wasn't I, the case I, here. I, You're well, talking about well, well, a targeted person yeah. here. No, 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 no. That's not, but I'm, I'm, if you go to the village of Al Majla in Yemen, uh, where I was, and you see the unexploded cluster bombs, and you have the list and, and photographic evidence, as I do, of the women and children that represented the vast majority of the deaths in, a, in this first strike that Obama authorized on Yemen. Those people were murdered 
by President Obama on his orders because there was believed to be someone from Al-Qaeda in that area. There's only one person that's been identified that had any connection to Al-Qaeda there. And, and 21 women and 14 children were killed in that strike. And the U.S. tried to cover it up and say it was a Yemeni strike. And we know from the WikiLeaks cables that David Petraeus conspired with the president of Yemen to lie to the world about who did that bombing. It's murder when you, it's mass murder when you say we are going to bomb this area because we believe a terrorist is there and you know that women and children are in the area. The United States has an obligation to not bomb that area if they believe that women and children are there. That, that, I'm sorry, that's in murder. The, in is that our, our policy is actually giving a greater incentive to people to become terrorists or to become insurgents or to become rebels against the United States. <laughs>